Are you ready for this? It's something that, it's kind of like something that we were interrupted with one night. So there's a, a blend. But it's to bring understanding of where we're at, what's happening. You know, one of the things that the Lord has always wanted to do is expose evil. Amen? Amen. Genesis chapter 1. Glory. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis 1, verse 1. It says what? In the beginning. Everyone would say in the beginning. Was all light. There was no darkness. Nothing but light. In the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What's the first thing God had created? Time. Amen? Time. One of the things he first created was multi-realms or dimensions of reality in multiple time. I'm going to say that again. These are what we call multiple time realms. Multiple realms or dimensions of reality. Is heaven a reality to those who are there? Is it a reality to those who are here? Yes. Multiple realms of reality, aren't they? And where there's multiple realms of reality, there's also multiple time realms. Some seen, some unseen. Some temporary, and, some, and only one eternal. Amen? Time has a purpose. It is to allow a completion of a beginning. Has everybody got that? What is time's purpose? To allow a completion of a beginning. Time is essential in this realm. In other words, we have a tendency to think that time is against us. In some places and sometimes it is. But we're not bound by space and time if we're in the spirit. Amen? There is no distance in the spirit realm. Why? Because when you're in the spirit realm, you're in the realm of eternal. Amen? That's why the word says that we are blessed every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. Heavenly places is timeless. Ooh. <laughs> is everybody all right? <laughs> so, in this time that we're in, we have choices, don't we? Amen? So, the better choices, the better rewards or outcomes, isn't there? Amen? So, in the beginning, God created not only time was the first thing, but he created the what? The heavens, the, uh, the eternals, the spiritual the angelic, and then the earth, meaning the material, the matter, what we see now, universe. Everyone say, in the beginning. In the beginning. All was light. In other words, God started everything with what? Light. Everything started with light. Revelation chapter 22. So in this reality of time, the more better choices we make, the more rewards or the better outcomes, aren't there? Amen. Revelation 22.12. In the beginning, all was light. Is everybody there? And behold, I am coming quickly in my what? Reward is with me to give to what? Everyone according to his work. So the better the choices you make, the better rewards and outcomes come. Amen? 
He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are what? Dogs, demonized individuals, sorcerers, and sexual immoral, and murderers, and idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie outside. Why? Did they make wrong choices? Yes. Know that every choice that we make is either working for us or against us. You are not determined by your works. You are determined by your choices. Does everybody understand that? Because behind every choice is an intent. So we are going to be judged by choices, aren't we? We're going to be judged by the intents of those choices. It says that Jesus is coming with his rewards. He is the time, the holder of time, and the author of time. He sets time. He's going to set a beginning one, and he's going to set an end. If you've ever noticed, wherever there's a beginning, there's an end. And when there's an end of something, there's always a beginning. Amen. John chapter 1. Hallelujah. In John 1 and verse 1. What does it say? In the what? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. So the author, developer, and the creator of time made all things. In him was what? Life. And the life was the light of men, or what we may say, man. And the light shines in the darkness, and darkness does not what? Comprehend it. This is powerful. In Christ is life and light. Darkness does not understand light, but light understands darkness. Is everybody okay? There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Hmm. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, children of light, to those who what? Believe in his name and follow him. Who were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God, or what we call light. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In Christ is life and light. Again, Darkness does not understand light, but light understands darkness. In other words, there is revelation with interpretation. If you are truly walking in the light, when God releases revelation, you will be able to interpret what he says. But if you're not walking in the light, because you can walk out of the light at any time, then interpretation will not be there. There'll be assumption. Amen? That's why when you and I praise and worship, what are we fighting for? We're cutting ourselves loose so that we can get more of light. And where there's more of light, there's more of life. And there's more of Him. And there's more interpretation. There's more understanding. So when darkness tries to come against you, you already understand it before it even gets near you. In John chapter 3. In 
in verse 18. Let's speak it together. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Why? Because that name is light. See, when you speak the name of Jesus, light comes and it exposes darkness. This is the commandment that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were what? Evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But those who, but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. See, men love darkness rather than light. Light exposes darkness, rebellion, lust, works of the flesh. People become angry when they get caught. They become angry because light exposed in darkness. <clears throat> look at the, look at, after these things that Jesus uh, and his disciples came into the land of Judea and there he remained with them and what? Baptized. So grab hold of this in this arena because light exposes darkness. People become angry, offended when they get caught. Because the works of darkness are done in darkness so others don't see. So if there's something that you're doing in darkness, it's because you're stepping out of light. That's why people do things where nobody can see. Does everybody understand? But God sees, light sees. And people don't even know that they're actually stepping out of light. They're stepping out of the light into darkness. Amen. Some still can, well, are still touching darkness and trying to walk in light. That's what you call good and evil, not righteousness. So they justify by being good and evil or being good. But righteousness cannot be produced where there is darkness. It can only be produced where there is pure light. Is everybody okay? Amen. Oh, glory. See, light sees it all. There's many people that don't even know what is known. But God knows. His Spirit knows. See, many people think they're getting away with certain things. Even though they haven't been caught. But God knows. And God lets his office know too. John 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> John 8, 42. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Jesus said to him, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father the what? Yeah. Devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. So, when people are walking in deception and promoting deception, they're actually promoting lying. Does everybody understand it? What is not truth is a lie. What is being hidden is a lie. Is everybody okay? But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. 
Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Are you ready for this? He who is of God hears God's words, counsel, correction, and direction. His first thing is depart from evil. In other words, depart from darkness. Walk out of it. Don't touch it because it will nullify righteousness and the only thing that you'll be able to produce is good. And it's not pleasing to God. He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore you do not hear because you're not of God. Does everybody understand this? Again, does not, Satan doesn't stand in the light. Individuals don't stand in the light because they're walking out of the light. So they're standing in what? Darkness. Amen? Everyone has a choice at any time to walk out of that light. At any time. And when you walk out of that light, you don't even realize you're no longer producing righteousness. You're only producing good. But there's always a justification. That's why many believers out there say, I'm a good person. Amen? I'm a good person. Well, you and I don't even have any righteousness. Our righteousness comes from being in the light, not because of anything that you and I have done. So people begin to justify their works. Why well, do this? I do that. I do this. I do... That has nothing to do with anything. Nothing. Nothing. Obedience is the only thing that keeps you in light. Disobedience walks you out of light. You cannot produce righteousness if you're still touching darkness. It's impossible. Amen? Everybody okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, look. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. All right, now, e even in this, even though, look at, doesn't the devil come as an angel of light? Amen. Doesn't a word say that uh, there will be wolves out there with sheep's clothing? Amen. Because they'll have a form of godliness, won't they? But really, they're not walking in the light, even though there seems to be light. But it's false. The devil has a counterfeit light. Matthew 7. In verse 13. Let's start at verse 12. Is everybody there? Let's read it. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in it by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life there are few who find it. Look at it. Beware of what? False prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but in, inwardly they are what? Ravenous. In other words, there is a counterfeit light, isn't there? You will know them by their what? Fruits. Rebellion. Lying. Deceptive. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree will bear bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will what? You're going to know them. You're going to know whether they're doing the right thing. You know Fruit, you know by character, you know by words, you know by judgments, you know, always, by attitudes, anger, intentions. Because look at this, watch, are you ready for this? Look at 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So what is he saying? He's saying you used to walk in the light, but you've walked out of the light. Now you're touching darkness. And now you cannot produce righteousness. You can only produce good. 
And there's a difference. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name, worked hard in your name? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me because you practice lawlessness, not righteousness. See, goodness is not righteousness. It's actually lawlessness. Because a person justifies themselves on their works and what they do instead of their fruits. And that is totally wrong. Has everybody got it? You cannot justify yourself by works. You justify yourself by obedience whether you're pleasing God, whether you're under the authority. Because if you're not under authority and you're doing your own thing, it comes, you're going to fall into a trap. It will come up. Nobody escapes it. Nobody. And it may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. It might not even be this year. But all of a sudden, boom. And then you see things will be going good and whatever. Why? Because the devil puts the hook in the jaw. And he lets it run. Oh, he lets people get married. He lets them have children, but the hook's still there. He's just waiting till you, he can reach as many people as possible to bring shame to the name of the Lord. And all of a sudden, boom! And that person goes, boom! It could be years down the road. But when you've taken that bait, it's called the bait of Satan. When you take that bait and you walk out of the light and you begin to look at your own goodness and what you do and all your, all your stuff, you, you, you. But you're still doing the sneak, the deception, the lie, and the rebellion. You can expect a judgment will come. Amen? Amen? Why? Because still touching darkness. Those of the light have allowed darkness to reign in this life. They step out. They've stepped out of darkness, but then went, walked into light, but then they still touching darkness. What do the words say? Touch nothing unclean. Amen? John chapter 12. That's why the word says, bring everything to what? The light. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John twelve thirty four. Let's speak it. The people answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. And how can you say, Son of man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of man? Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness, what? Overtake you. So never think that darkness can't overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. Why? Because he becomes blinded again. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. Darkness will overtake a person if they let it. Amen? If they let it. Go to Isaiah 14. Glory. <laughs> it's amazing how many people will act when they're in fellowship, but when they're out of fellowship, boy, they're a totally different person. God knows. Isaiah 14, verse 3. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. It shall come to pass in the day the Lord gives you rest from your sorrow and from your fear, 
and the hard bondage in which you were made to serve, that you will take up a proverb against the king of Babylon and say, who's the king of Babylon? Anybody know? Satan. Amen. Lucifer. How the oppressor has ceased, the golden city ceased, the Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. He who struck the people in the wrath with a continual stroke, he who ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and no one hinders. The whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth in singing. Indeed, the cypress trees rejoice over you. And the cedars of Lebanon saying, Since you were cut down, no woodsman has come upon us again, against us. But it says here what? Hell from beneath is excited about you to meet you at your coming. It stirs up the dead for you, all chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. They shall speak and say to you, Have you also become as weak as we? Have you become like us? Your pomp has brought down. Your pompous, your arrogance, your pride has brought you down to hell. And the sound of your stringed instruments, the maggot, is spread under you. And the worms cover you. Now he explains who he's talking about. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, meaning light. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will what? Ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the most high God. He was the first false deity. He was a beast. Exalting himself, wanting worship to himself. Wanting attention to himself. But of course the Lord's response said was, you're going down to hell, homie. <laughs> to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the idiot who made the earth tremble? Who shook kingdoms? Who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities? Who did not open the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, all of them slept in glory, everyone in his own house. But you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like the garment of those who are slain, thrust through with a sword, who go down to the stones of the pit, like a corpse trotting underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial, because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. The broad of evil doers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his children because of the iniquity of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with cities. Why? Because they used to run it when they were light. But when they walked out of the light, Lucifer and, the, and those who followed him destroyed everything. It says, for I will rise up against them, says the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name of the remnant. And what? Offspring and prosperity, says the Lord. I will also make it a pos possession for the porcupine and marshes of muddy water. I will sweep it with the broom of destruction, says the Lord. The Lord of hosts is sworn, surely as I have thought of it, so shall it come come to pass, and I have purpose, so it shall stand. Now listen, I, I just want to explain, because this is important. Lucifer was proclaimed himself as the first deity. Remember, now he was known as a, a, a light bearer. God created Lucifer as to be the praise and worship leader of the universe. He brought people into God's, well, not people, but angels, he maintained God's presence everywhere. And then he walked. He stepped out of the light. He stepped out of the light thinking that he could keep maintain that presence of God in himself. When he stepped out of the light, he stepped out of God's love. He stepped out of everything. He stepped out of God's love. 
He stepped out of God's light. He stepped out of God's life. And he walked into lust, into darkness, and opened a realm to dark matter. Does everybody understand that? He opened the realm to dark matter. And he became the first to leave the light of love and life and became the ruler of darkness himself. Because he couldn't rule the light. Does everybody grab hold of this? Because he couldn't rule the light, but he could rule the darkness. Hmm. God created Adam, a man of light in God's image, to rule the earth and replace Lucifer. In Genesis chapter 3. In the beginning, everything was light. The name of the teaching is in the beginning. <clears throat> in verse 1, the serpent was more cunning than any beast. The serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat it, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were what? Naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Now let's get right to it. <laughs> the serpent, the wolf... <laughs> With angelic features, shapeshifter. He was upright, he had a false beauty. God called him as, as he is a deceiver. That's the word in the, in the arena of the devil deceiver. He's wicked. He was known as the father of darkness. He promoted hatred and lust. He enticed Eve to step out of the light. Does everybody understand this? He enticed Eve to step out of the light. Believe me, she didn't eat a fruit, okay? It wasn't, it wasn't about a fruit. She stepped out of the light. He enticed her to step out of the light and into darkness of lice, of lust. To defile her, seduce her. And she enticed Adam to step out of the light into the darkness and, dis and seduce him. Is everybody all right? Cool. Verse 12. Hmm. And here it is. Genesis chapter 3, verse 12. Then the man said, to the, said that the woman... <laughs> Whom you gave to me, with me, she gave me from the tree, and I ate. And the Lord said to the woman, what is this you've done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. So everybody was playing a blame, uh, doing a blame game, weren't they? It's amazing when you walk out of light and you're in darkness, everybody blames everyone else. Well, he did this, she said this, hit this, boom, boom, boom. Everybody, now you've stepped out of the light and into darkness. So the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go. Well, then he was upright, wasn't he? And you shall eat dust all the days of your life, and I'll put enmity, hatred between you and the woman, and between her seed and your seed. Wait a minute. Seed means conception. Somebody got it. So the Lord saw that she was pregnant. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and conception. Why would he judge her to that arena? Because the serpent seduced her. 
and produce an offspring. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, not for the serpent. And he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and got sucked out of the darkness, I mean out of the light into darkness, and you have eaten from the tree and participated, which I commanded you say, don't participate or don't eat it, curses the ground for your sake. How many of y'all know the earth is cursed? Yeah. Curses the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles. It shall bring forth for you. You shall eat the herb of the field. In sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you will, you were taken. For dust you are and dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living, good and evil. Pretty wild, huh? In other words, and then the Lord said this. He said, so also to Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. He killed an animal. Does everybody understand that the Lord killed, why? Because there was blood. So now uh, all life was in the blood. Prior to that, it wasn't about blood. And, and in this, when the Lord covered them, he actually gave them, it wasn't a full atonement. Amen? But it was a covering of atonement to restore covenant. Then the Lord said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to what? No good and evil. No good and evil. Why? He was no longer producing what? Righteousness. Does everybody understand this? And now lest he put out his hand and take also the tree of life that produces righteousness and eat and live forever. God said, you ain't going to live forever like this, man. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. And he drove the man and the woman out and he placed a cherub at the east of the garden of Eden, a flame of sword, flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Again, Grab this because now again the good is false righteousness. It isn't pure righteousness. It's false righteousness. The good and evil is now associated with false righteousness. So when people say, yes, yeah, good people, that's not righteousness, is it? You can only produce righteousness by living in the light because you're eating of the tree of light. But anybody can walk out of it at any time. And begin to touch darkness. Now they're not producing righteousness. They're producing goodness. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Genesis 4. Now, knew Eve, his wife. In other words, he knew that she was pregnant. And she bore Cain and said, I've acquired a man from the Lord or from the serpent. Why? Because the, he was known as the angel of the Lord. And she bore again this time in her and his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. See, Adam knew of his wife was pregnant, child from the angel of the Lord. Now wa watch how this uh, happens here because this is so powerful. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering to, of the fruit of the ground to the Lord, and Abel also brought the fruit born of his flock and their fat. And the Lord respected Abel in his offering, but he did not respect Cain in his offering. And Cain was very what? Angry. There it is. Why? Was he walking in the light or not? No. And his countenance fell. And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desires for you. But you shall rule over it. Now Cain talked with his brother Abel. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and what? Killed him. Well, who's Now look it. Who, who did the Lord say, Your father is the devil. He's a murderer from the beginning. 
What did Cain do? He murdered. Why? Because who was his father? Amen. His father was the serpent. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out of this day from the face of the ground and I will be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and vagabond on the earth and it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, therefore whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him seventyfold. And the Lord said a what? A mark on him. This may be hard for you to grasp, but that's called the mark of the beast. Why? Who was his father? The beast. Amen. Isn't that what's going to happen? Mark of the beast. Why? From a fallen angel and a false deity. But in the beginning, there was light, wasn't there? There was light, but things changed, didn't they? Things changed tremendously. And Genesis 5 and verse 1. And it says, and this is the book and genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created a man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created the male and female, blessed him, and called them mankind in the day that they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his what? Come on, see it with me. And he begot a son in his what? Own likeness. Hmm. And after his image, it named him Seth. So was Cain in his likeness? No. Whose likeness was he in? The serpent. Amen. Is everybody okay? Hmm. And after he begot Seth, the days of Adam were 800 years, and he had sons and daughters, and all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. <clears throat> Seth was the only one in his image. Genesis 6. It says, would you read it with me? Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth. Now wait a minute. Was Cain multiplying? Yes. But he was an offspring. He was actually a Nephilim. Cain was a Nephilim. And they were producing more and more Nephilim and giants and so forth. And, and Cain's family began to multiply. And it says, um, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth that the daughters were born to them. That the sons of God, known as angels, saw that the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Look at verse 4. What does it say? And there were giants on the earth in those days. Well, where did those giants come from? Cain's lineage. And then it says, And off, also after when the sons of God, those 200 watchers that put on flesh, they came into the physical realm and took women and produced offsprings also. And there were giants in the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God, the angels came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. These were mighty men who were of old men of renown. Wow. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was what? Great in the earth and that every intent of of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuing. The Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man. Why? Because all DNA had changed. Whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds under the air. For I am sorry that I have made man, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Again, Cain was a Nephilim, giants and angels and then the angels came and put on flesh. And out of uh, Noah's sons, Ham 
after God destroyed the whole world with the flood, Ham married a hybrid or one of the offsprings. So through Ham's lineage, then Ham's son was called Canaan. So you see that Cain repeated again. Amen? And through that lineage produced giants. That's where David fought a giant Goliath and, and so forth. But they were creating their own deities. Nimrod was also a giant. He was known as the king of Babylon at that time. He built a tower. There were Nephilim, Rephilims, and then they have the Canaanites. Um, and they were all living Can uh, and so Canaan were giants and, and false gods. They were called men of renown. They were called Gaborims. In Jude 6. Is everybody okay? Well, I haven't seen anybody run out yet, so everything's cool. Now, all of these offsprings that died from these giants in the flood are now called demons. They're disembodied spirits. Remember, they strive on lust. Everything is about lust. It started right in the garden, right? It's lust. They're lustafarians. In Jude verse 6, what does it say? And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the what? Great day. Great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to what? Great. Sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Go to Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. The mixing of genes and DNA started with Cain. Oh, glory. Second Peter 2, verse 4. Let's read it. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the city, cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live what? Ungodly. Wow. Making them an example. Again, the mixing of genes and started with Cain, daughters of the DNA and giants. Listen, these last days, in these last days, the Lord will allow them to be released from prison. It will happen that they will be released from prison to fulfill end time prophetic ro role in helping Lucifer seduce the earth. Does everybody get this? They will eventually be released. Hope you ain't here. Amen? Remember the demons are what? They are the children of the Nephilims. These angelic watchers came to earth to be kings, emperors, priests, pharaohs, gods, and goddesses. They are the titans, fawns of Greek and Roman mythology. With supernatural strength, strength psychic powers, they want us to believe mythology is merely fiction. Almost all these characters are based on real watchers. They're hybrid children who played those roles on earth as false deities. They sacrificed humans, drank their blood, levitated objects. They astral projected and traveled. 
They report their future. They practice magic arts. They teach the art of war. They are masters of astronomy and astrology. They taught mankind abortion to keep certain women beautiful for sexual pleasures. They are the incubus and succubuses, magi, the ancient Egypt and Babylonians. They place and remove curses. They use poison, gossip, backbiting to intrigue and to take power over and overthrow the true sons and daughters of God. That is still going on. They are master builders of ancient cities and pyramids. Self-portrait statues. You can go into any, any uh, metropolitan and you see their pictures and art and all kinds of stuff. Russia has big statues of Gog and Magog. You go in and you got all of this stuff. You, they got deities. You go into the cities and whatever. They're, they're all over the place. They are builders of their own images. Half fallen angel and half human beings. Some of them half animal and half human. They are the stock that the Antichrist will come from. Fully fallen host, fully human man. They were here before the flood and they're here after the flood. They are creators of alien hybrids, greys, and UFOs. Of this modern time. They are the seed of Satan. They are false deities. And they are enforcers of the mark of the beast. We haven't seen it all yet. But they have come out already. They are here. They are exposing themselves. They know they only have a short time. They don't care. The only thing that's pre preventing them from coming out full blown is the body of Christ, which is the light. Amen? Amen? They're the light. But look at anybody can walk out of the light at any time and begin to touch darkness. Revelation chapter 12. Is everybody okay? Revelation 12 and verse 1. Would you read it with me? Now a great sign appeared in heaven and a woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet and her head a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. And his tail drew a third of the stars or a third of the angels and threw them to the earth. And a dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then a woman fled in the wilderness and there she is a place prepared by God that, she should feed, that he should feed her there for 1,260 days, which is three and a half years, which has not come yet. Now, we know that there's three dimensionals to this. This is what has occurred already, but there's another part that will occur. It will be known as, first of all, is associated with uh, Mary and, and, and the birth of Jesus. Then it will come to where it will be Israel and the believers of Christ. In verse 7, it says, And war broke out in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. And the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who what? Deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the what? Blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. In other words, only those. Third level what? Commitment. They were the ones that overcame. Amen? 1 John chapter 3.
1 John chapter 3 and verse 10. Let's speak it. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are what? Manifested. What we're seeing, aren't they? You're going to know them by their fruit. If somebody promotes abortion, is he a child of God? No. Same-sex marriage, is he a child of God? No. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. So if that person can only practice goodness and evil but can't practice righteousness. He's walked out of the light into darkness or never walked into the light. Who do, whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was the what? Wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. Wow. Ephesians 5. Glory. And verse 1. Ephesians 5, verse 1. Therefore be what? Imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But what? Fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness. Let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. For you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were what? Once darkness, but now you are light and Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Finding out what's acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose it. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then your works circumspectly, not as fools, but wise, redeeming the time because of what? Because of what? days are evil. Do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is. And I'm going to close at Daniel 12. In verse 1 it says, and at that time Michael shall stand up the what? Great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that time. And at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life. Some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteous like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge or technology shall increase. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this river bank and the other on the other river bank. And the one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half time, which is three and a half years. And when the power of the holy people have been completely shattered, 
all these things will be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many will be purified, made white, refined, but the wicked will do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Amen? Now listen. In the beginning was the light. Don't be fooled. The end is going to be light too. It'll all be light. So don't get caught in darkness because you'll be destroyed. Amen? Amen? Let's be careful not to walk out of the light and only produce goodness. Allow the Lord to build a house. Amen? Amen? Let the works of the flesh and the deceitfulness of selfish desires and emotional desires that are displeasing to God and out of God's time will walk you right into darkness. But you allow God to keep you into the light if you truly have fellowship with him. If you don't, you'll still do your own thing. Amen? Amen. But let's get things right. Because time is too short and God is raising up third level commitment individuals. Those that do not have a head. Their heads are the head of Christ. Amen? We are headless to carnality. But we carry the mind and the heart of Christ. It is important. Things are about to explode in multiple levels, in multiple ways. Deception will increase. And even the word says many will fall from the faith, taking heed to deceiving spirits, seducing seductive spirits and doctrines of demons. And it's happening. It's happening. The enemy is drawing people right out of darkness where they're not producing righteousness but only goodness. Search yourself out. Where do you stand? What's your intent? What have you been doing? God knows. Bring it to light and confess. Break it off and get back into the light. Amen? It's time. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed because even you said that you're going to come with your bright light and destroy the works of darkness. Many, many who think that they're walking right will be destroyed thinking that they're right. But there's only one right, and that's you, Master. We have all fallen short. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace, and ask that you'll position us according to your will and not our own, that you'll st establish our steps, our thoughts, and that we will be sons and daughters that are pleasing to you as children of light and imitators of the King of kings and Lord of lords. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Be blessed.